So last time we talked about pressure, and we talked about some different units of pressure and how to convert between different units of pressure. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to go on and we're going to talk about an idea called partial pressure. We'll talk about what that is, uh, we'll talk about how to find the partial pressure of a gas, um, and our target is to be able to find the partial pressure of a gas. So let's go ahead and do that. Partial pressure is a pretty simple idea. It has to do with a mixture of gases. And you might say, well, how often do you deal with a mixture of gases? All the time. The air around you right now is a mixture of gases. A lot of time people get to high school and they don't understand that the air isn't just oxygen. Um, they understand that the air contains oxygen, but they think that the air is either completely or mostly oxygen. And that's just not true. The air around you is mostly nitrogen. It's about 78% nitrogen. And it's about 21% oxygen. And it's about 1% other stuff like carbon dioxide and argon and some other stuff, right? So the air around you is mostly nitrogen. And it's, you know, just about a, about a, a fifth oxygen right about 21 percent um so i mean the air around you is a mixture of gases mixtures of gases happen all the time and so um what the partial pressure is is what that means is that the total pressure of a gas a mixture of gases is just equal to the sum of the pressures of each part so we can express it like this what this says is that the pressure the total pressure of a mixture is equal to the pressure of the first gas plus the pressure of the second gas plus the pressure of the third gas and so on for as many gases as are part of the mixture. So if I were to tell you, um, hey, we've got a mixture of gases and there's four gases in there and I told you the pressure of each one and asked you what's the total pressure, all you got to do is add them up, right? Similarly, if I were to tell you the total pressure and tell you the pressure of maybe three out of four parts and ask you what's the pressure of the fourth part, all you got to do is subtract and you know subtract those away from the total and you'll get the pressure of the fourth part. Pretty simple, right? Okay, that's the idea of partial pressure. Now, your problems are going to be just that, that you're going to work on. I'm going to give you the pressure of the parts and ask you for the total or I'm going to give you the total and some of the parts and ask you for the pressure of the remaining part. All you got to do is add or subtract. Pretty simple. But there will be some problems where um, the gas that you're working with has been collected over water. And I'm going to show you what that means and uh, why we got to watch out for it on our problems. So let's take a look at that. Okay, um, here I'm going to show you what it means for a gas to be collected over water. Okay. Um, oftentimes working with a gas can be a tricky thing because a gas has a tendency to want to, you know, go away. So um, you got to trap it. And what I have here, I have a little setup where we can trap a gas and we'll collect it over water. And you'll see why we call it over water, right? Here I have a little bucket that's got some water in it and I have a graduated cylinder in there, right? Now my graduated cylinder is upside down under the water and it is also filled with water all the way up to the top. So this is completely filled with water right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this flask, I'm gonna do a little chemical reaction in here to, to produce a gas. I'm just gonna kind of mix uh, baking soda and vinegar and it's gonna make carbon dioxide. And uh, we'll stopper it up so that gas can't get away. And you can see the little hose that goes on here. I'm going to put the little hose through the water here into that graduated cylinder so that the gas will come out in the graduated cylinder. And you'll see the cylinder fill up with, with gas, and that gas will be the carbon dioxide that was produced from my chemical reaction. So let's do this here. Let me get some baking soda. Try to do this without making a mess. I don't need a whole lot. That should be probably more than sufficient. And then we put some vinegar in there, and I'm going to stop it up real quick. And you can see. 
Oh, it's already completely filled with the gas. All the water has been forced out of it already. So now in my in my graduate, I'm still making carbon dioxide here. It's all just bubbling out because my graduated cylinder wasn't big enough. But my graduated cylinder is now filled with carbon dioxide. Now the thing about this method of collecting a gas is that because it is over water, there's going to be some water vapor in that cylinder with the carbon dioxide. And what we're going to want to do at some point is to be able to figure out um, how much, what's the partial pressure of that water vapor and what's the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide. And I'm going to show you how to figure out what's the partial pressure of the water vapor. It's really simple. We're just going to look it up on a website. When we collect this gas over water, we're going to want to be able to find the partial pressure of the water vapor in there. And so, I mean, there are many ways that you can, you know, look this up. You can go to a, a reference book. You can go to this website. And there's a link to this website, this little calculator, um, at the top of your assignment. And it's also, I believe, on the slides for this uh particular lesson. So all you got to do is you come here and you need to put in the temperature of the water, right? So, you know, the problem that you're working on will tell you what the temperature of the water is. You put that in there and you want to make sure you have the right unit, right? So was it given in Celsius? We generally don't use Fahrenheit and so forth, right? Maybe it was in Kelvin. I don't even know what these ones are, right? So most likely it'll be in Celsius. And then, uh, let me see, let me get my keyboard here. And I'll put in maybe that temp maybe that water was 21 degrees. I don't know. 21. 21 degrees Celsius. Okay. And then we want to pick the unit that we want the pressure in. So, you know, which pressure unit are we working in? Are we working in pascals, kilopascals, bar, uh, atmospheres, millimeters of mercury? Which unit of pressure are we working in? Maybe, I don't know, maybe the problem is asking you about uh, atmospheres. So we'll put atmospheres there. And then we will click Calculate. And it'll tell me the partial pressure of the water in that particular unit. Right? So um, some of the problems, be very careful when you're reading them. Watch out for the words collected over water. That means that there, one of the gases in the mixture is water vapor. Just come to this website, look up its partial pressure. Easy enough. Let's have a look at some kind of example here. This one, it says, oxygen gas was collected over water by, decom by the decomposition of KClO3. The pressure and temperature during the experiment were 731 millimeters of mercury and 20 degrees Celsius. What was the partial pressure of oxygen? Okay, so, well, it tells me that the um, total pressure is going to be 731 millimeters of mercury. And I know because it was collected over water, I need to worry about what was the partial pressure of the water vapor. So I'm going to go to that website. I'm going to look up the partial pressure of the water vapor, and I'm going to want it in millimeters of mercury. It told me the temperature was 20 degrees Celsius, so I put in 20 Celsius, and uh, I want the unit to be millimeters of mercury. So I select MMHG, press calculate, and the partial pressure there is 17, it's about 17.5 millimeters of mercury. So then to know what is the partial pressure of the oxygen, what we're going to want to do is subtract those. So I'm going to get my calculator and I'm going to subtract those two numbers. And so the partial pressure of the oxygen is 713.5 millimeters of mercury. Pretty easy. Now you got to be careful because you cannot add or subtract different units, right? So um, if they were to give me millimeters of mercury and I went to the website and I looked at the partial pressure in, let's say, atmospheres, I could not add or subtract those two numbers. 
the two numbers you're adding or subtracting must have the same units. So be careful with that. Make sure you add or subtract with the same units. Okay, another example here. It says a tank containing ammonia and argon has a total pressure equal to 1.8 atmospheres. 1.8 atmospheres. The pressure of the ammonia was 1.2 atmospheres. 1.2 atmospheres. What is the pressure of the argon? So they told me the total, they told me one of the parts, and they asked me to find the other part. So really all I have to do is subtract those two numbers. Notice that this problem did not say that the gases were collected over water, so we don't have to worry about going to look up the partial pressure of the water vapor, because there isn't any. So we subtract those, we get 0 0.6 atmospheres. Note that the two units were the same. If one of the units was not the same, I would want to convert it, like we learned how to do in the last lesson. Super easy. So there is a little bit about the partial pressure of um, a mixture of gases. Um, in the next video, we'll go ahead and, and we are going to talk, start talking about the gas laws. Next time, we'll talk about Boyle's law, which tells us the relationship between the pressure and the volume of a gas. Um, hopefully, that helps us to be able to find the partial pressure of a gas. And so, until next time, take it easy.